G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. So it's Monday evening here in Australia, and it's Monday sort of morning over in the States. And everybody is waiting to see what's going to happen with the markets. Obviously it's been trading a little bit sideways, we can see the market is slightly down, 363 billion, or was it 364 billion, so it hasn't really lost too much. Gas prices, uh, you know, we definitely want them cheaper, but 38 is not too bad considering it's where it's been. But look at the BTC dominance. It's starting to rise. It's been stuck in that 57% uh, percent area. Now it's around that 58% percent area. Uh, and I'd say it's going to slightly grow. The higher Bitcoin gets, the higher the BTC dominance is going to get. And I don't think uh, much will change until really we go past 20,000. I think if Bitcoin starts to slowly move its way up, it will uh, increase its dominance, and once Bitcoin gets past its old all-time high of sort of 20,000, that's when I think you'll see a lot of money start to pour into the alts. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But here's something else that everybody's waiting on. So the Great Financial Reset. IMF Managing Director calls for a new Brenton Woods moment. Right, as the global economy shudders from the disastrous effects of central planning, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, Managing Director in Washington, D.C., Kristalina uh, Grigori, Grigorieva, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, I probably butchered it, Grigorieva, is calling for a new Bretton Woods moment. Uh, she spoke about the juncture on October 15 and she stressed today's economic hardships are the same as the difficulties the world faced at the end of World War II. Free, mar free market advocates on social media and forums believe the IMF managing director's recent Bretton Woods speech should invoke increased suspicion. So basically what they're talking about here is you know, what's going to be the new financial system that we're coming to because cash just isn't working. Now I think a lot of it's going to be basically digital currencies, but there's people talking about, you know, are we going to go back to a gold standard? Uh, I don't think we'll go back to a gold standard. I think gold will make up part of it. I think it's going to be a mixed bag what uh, the financial system is based around. I think gold's going to play a part in it. Then there's going to be digital currencies and then there's probably going to be, you know, some other things thrown in there. But, you know, anyone who thinks it's going to be a gold standard, uh, unlikely. I couldn't see us going back to gold. Gold just doesn't work. Uh, it's, you know, some people out there would love for it to be, you know, backed by Bitcoin. Unfortunately, I don't think the world's ready to take on Bitcoin as a world reserve. It'll be a reserve for people that'll be used around the world. But the world, you know, governments and things like that, and banks, they're not going to... Uh, put a whole lot of money into it. I don't think anyway. We'll have to wait and see. You know, same with Ethereum. Just I don't see that being a world reserve asset. But, you know, who knows what could come out. I could be completely wrong. Uh, and Bitcoin or Ethereum could be, get in there. You know, there's been a ton of stuff out there from the XRP army about, you know, XRP is going to be the world reserve uh I guess, sort of currency that's used going to be used to transfer that. Well, it'll be interesting, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Ripple has, you know, done, you know, dotted all its uh, I's and crossed all its T's in regards to sort of regulation and, you know, partnerships with the right people. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. I'm not saying it is going to happen, but I wouldn't be complaining. I obviously have a bag of XRP and I would love for it to be, you know, the world sort of currency. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll have a a one world currency anytime soon. I think in the future, uh, that's definitely going to be something. I just don't know if the, you know, the world is ready for it just yet. But again, who knows? I could be completely wrong. But this is supposed to happen today. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what time it's happening today. But, you know, in the next 24 sort of hours, or really probably the next sort of 12 to 24 hours, we could add some, we could have some really, really big news about yeah, how the financial system is going to play out moving forwards, you know, digital currencies, you know, again, does Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP, XRP play any part in that? You know, there's talk about Stellar maybe playing a part uh, in retail uh, money. Uh, again, we'll, ju we'll just have to wait and see. You know, gold, do we go back to a semi-gold standard? You know, there's talk that uh, the price of gold has been held down, gold and silver, by big banks and things like that. 
and that gold should be worth about $30,000 per ounce, which is a pretty big hike from the $2,800 an ounce it is right now. And likewise, people talking about silver being worth, I think it's about $2,000 or $5,000 an ounce, which is a big hike from where it is right now. So big news, and we're all waiting to see what happens there. Also, this is what uh, a lot of stock shares, Bitcoin, all those kind of things is waiting for. Are we going to see more stimulus? So Bitcoin is braced for a bombshell from uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency traders are searching for direction, with the market more or less treading water uh, since the summer. The Bitcoin price, hovering around 11400 per Bitcoin, has been trading broadly in line with equity markets in recent, recent months. With groundbreaking announcements, including payments companies Square buying $50 million worth of Bitcoin, failing to much move the market. Well, I wouldn't say that's not true. It did move the market. Uh, it just wasn't a big, massive pump. But I think, you know... It's building towards that. But that's just my personal opinion, not financial advice. Now Bitcoin investors might get the signal they've been waiting for. With Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell due to speak as part of a panel on uh, cross-border payments and digital currencies at the International Monetary Fund's meeting, uh, annual meeting, which is being held. The live stream panel starting at 8 a.m. Uh, e, I don't know what that uh, time is on Monday, October 19th, will discuss the benefits of cross uh, benefits and risks of cross-border digital currencies, as well as their policy implications. The IMF announced last week. So again, this is it's a big, uh, you know, sort of you know meeting that's happening today, and there's people from all over the world uh, that are live streaming and partying being part of it. I think there was someone from Saudi Arabia's banking financial sector that's involved, someone from Malaysia's uh, financial sectors involved, uh, Jerome Powell, a uh, number of other really big wigs and the IMF themselves. So there could be some really, really big news that comes out of that and we're all just waiting to see. I don't have any inkling what it might be, you know, hopefully it's something good. Uh, that would be nice for not just all us, you know, cryptocurrency enthusiasts, but the world in general. Uh, you know, one of my sort of bigger fears, though, is it just really leads towards all these CBDC uh, currencies, which, you know, they will help with some things, but in the end, it's just a fiat system still, which doesn't work, and it's still going to go to zero. It doesn't matter if you now take it away from a paper-based one to a, uh, a digital one, it goes to zero. It'll just be hyperinflation and all the rest of it. So if that's all that comes out of it, it'll be disappointing. But look, in the end, really, it doesn't matter what happens. They're going to do something that is, you know, going to sort of benefit the, you know, the entire, you know, monetary financial uh, realm, uh, whether it's, you know, really good or just somewhat good, I guess time will tell. But also, 48-hour stimulus deadline. U.S. lawmakers race to approve second stimulus checks before election. So the election is not too far away. It's in early November, and it is sort of getting towards, you know, it's just after the mid part of October, but we're getting to the later part of October. So amid the intense stimulus relief aid discussions, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has set a deadline for the White House to come to an agreement on the next stim stimulus package, which provides a second round of stimulus checks for Americans. Meanwhile, the Senate is set to vote on a smaller stimulus bill uh, without, di uh, yeah, without direct payments this week. Stimulus packages to help Americans cope with the coronavirus-driven economic crisis have been heavily discussed this week as U.S. lawmakers hope to approve a new relief aid before the November presidential election. Six proposed stimulus packages provide a second round of stimulus checks to Americans. The latest proposals from Democrats is the $2.2 trillion revised Heroes Act, but the White House has made a counteroffer of $1.8 trillion stimulus package. Look, it doesn't really matter which one happens, it's still bullish for all those investments. They're gonna go out to the companies that are struggling uh, and need help, they're gonna go out to you know, everyday citizens, and I know this is just America, but America, it's the financial hub of the world. So, you know, all the big businesses over there get stimulus, then, you know, all the people get stimulus, that will start to pump up the markets and the other countries will just follow suit. When they see positivity in the markets, they'll jump in. When they see negativity in the markets, then they're just going to jump out. And that's the way it works. 
So Pelosi then set a 48-hour deadline to reconcile differences after another round of stimulus discussions with Mnuchin on Saturday evening. She told ABC News on Sunday that the deadline applies to lawmakers' ability to get a deal done before the 3rd of November election. Uh, Pelosi said the 48 only relates to if we want to get it done before the election, which we do, uh, is what she said. So yeah, look, before the election would be great, but really before, after... I don't think it's going to make too much difference. I think it's, yeah, they're going to have to approve it. There's just no way. Uh, things are getting ready to fail and ready to fold and ready to buckle. They will simply approve it. And there'll be more to come. Until there is a, a cure, some kind of vaccine, and it's then been, you know, kind of distributed and, you know, has proven that it really will work and there's no adverse side effects because those kind of things can really hurt. There could be some vaccine, everyone will get super pumped and the markets, the markets will explode with exuberance. All of a sudden that vaccine, it turns out, no, it doesn't work and there's too much um, side effects and things like that. There'll be a massive pullback. Uh, people will dump just as fast as they uh, got into the market. So it's going to take a while. I think this stimulus package that's coming up won't be the last. Uh, and they will just, and they've already said they will, they're going to try and print their way out of this. They will just keep injecting more and more and more money until the problem goes away. But my personal opinion, and it's you know shared by a number of people out there, is that it's putting a Band-Aid uh, over it. And that's it. Eventually that Band-Aid falls off. And this is a wound that won't simply go away from a band-aid. It needs serious work. So it's just, you know, as uh, Ivan on Tech would say sometimes, it's just kicking the can down the road. It is not solving the problem. So, yeah, while it will boost the price of everything up, at some stage, we're still going to have to fix this problem. And will the problem literally be fixed from the IMF, you know, talking about a new Brenton's Wood, a Brenton Woods moment? And, you know, will we have a definitive answer within the next few hours? That's what we're all really, really waiting for. We can go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. So this is where we are. This is that greater trend line. We've broken out of it. This is our next shorter term trend line. And I believe we will continue to follow this. Uh, I don't believe we're going to break below this. And this is now an old defunct downward trending line. So we'll actually be able to get rid of this soon. But I just want to see if this will pull back. Uh, and bounce off this, although I don't think it's going to pull back. I think we might sort of, you know, get down to around the $11,000 mark and cover that CME gap, and it's only might. I'm not saying we will, and then I think we're going to power up and we're going to start to test this $12,500 level. I, I don't think we'll quite get there. I'm thinking more around 11000 sort of 200 and then we're going to range from 11,200 to around about 11,600. We'll break out above, we'll pull back below, and then probably come right down to the actual, you know, sort of $12,000 level. And then we'll start to range sideways, you know, much like this. And this is what we want, though. It's the volatility. That's, you know, what makes crypto so interesting and where the big gains are. You don't get to have this kind of pump without a pullback like this. And this pullback is only about sort of two thirds of it. So you still got a third of all your profits from just back here, from here to here. You know, there's a third of those gains. It's just these other two thirds were pulled away. But again, you know, let's get rid of this. What was this? This move was made back in July. So we're only in October. So July, uh, August, September, October. It's only a couple of months we've had this kind of move. So let's actually... Uh, have a look. Where is that tool going to be? This is what we want. All right. So from here to where we are now. So this is just where we are now. It's a 25.74. So let's say nearly 26% increase in just a matter of months. So in what have we got? 89 days. If you had have got into Bitcoin here, yes, it's gone up a lot higher. It's also gone a lot lower, but this is currently where we're sitting. In the last 89 days, if you invested in Bitcoin alone back here, you've made 25% in a matter of 89 days. That's, you know, less than three months. Well, it's around about three months. You've made 26% profit. 
Good luck trying to do that in any other market. It just won't happen. This is crypto. You have to be able to accept that you can have massive pumps like this. So I don't know what that would have been. I'm guessing it would have been a you know 40, 50 percent uh, increase, and then you know you've lost you know maybe 25, 30 percent of it. I don't know. I'd have to measure it. But still, even with this all this volatility, there you go, 26 percent in a matter of three months just by buying Bitcoin and holding. Now, could you have made more trying to trade this? Possibly, if you're a really, really good trader. But me, I don't really trade. Like I said before, and I've said a number of times, I do some swing trading every now and then, and I can tell you now it goes wrong. I've got a number of uh, projects that I've invested in thinking I was making a good trade that are near 50% losses. Unibright, for one, uh, it just constantly stays around the you know, high 20% to high 40% uh, losses for me. But I still believe in the project, so I'm not worried. I'm just holding for the long term. But I've got other ones that are the same. But I am going to hold, and in sort of 12 months' time from now, we'll see whether they're at. If I've lost everything in those ones, then so be it. It's a couple of hundred dollars, sometimes literally even less than a couple of hundred dollars that I put into them. My main, you know, the predominant of my portfolio is in Bitcoin, which is doing well, which is in um, Ethereum, which is doing really well out of the big ones, and in XRP, which, you know, kind of ranges all over the place, but it doesn't take much to get a profit. I think I'm still sitting at about sort of 20% profit uh, on my XRP holdings excuse me, uh, from when I got in earlier this year, not long after the crash. So 20, excuse me, 20% profit's not too bad, but uh, I've been, you know, it's less than this uh, and it's taken a whole lot longer. But again, that's not me fighting on XRP. I still believe in XRP. I've bought into XRP and, you know, maybe in the next few hours we get some amazingly bullish news about XRP from the IMF. Anyway, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. That is it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Uh, there might have been some game trains in there and I hope you're on them. I'm not sure I was, but I'll see you next time.